Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times, brought to you this Sunday, January 30, 2022, by Wilcon Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24 7 with Wilcon Online Store. Just go to shop.wilcon.com.ph. For today's editorial, consensus emerging on fishermen's rights. Not surprisingly, the foreign policy on China and the dispute in the West Philippine Sea, or WPS, were discussed in various media interviews of those running for president in the coming elections. Although the leading candidates have different ideas, there seems to be common ground when it comes to protecting the interests of small fishermen. Assuming that whoever is elected as president can actually execute his or her plans, the emerging consensus is an encouraging development for those in a sector, which historically has been among the poorest of the poor in the Philippines. Rightly so, several candidates have mentioned that small Filipino fishermen should be allowed to fish around the territories claimed by several countries, including the Philippines and China. Besides them, the other claimants are Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan. Other claimants are hardly mentioned in the public discourse, although they should be considered. They are part of this complex problem, and understanding it is key to formulating a solution. Another complicated aspect of the issue is the global significance of the WPS, which the rest of the world knows as the South China Sea. China claims most of the maritime area, which Western powers, particularly the United States, perceive as a threat to freedom of navigation. The significance of the WPS can be appreciated in economic terms. About $5.3 trillion worth of trade passed through it every year. That is 60% of the world's total maritime trade and 22% of total global trade. In strategic terms, the WPS is equally vital. China's expansive claim and its military buildup in the disputed territories are challenged by the US and its allies. Feeling threatened, Beijing accuses them of containing and suppressing China's development. Marginalized With the stakes so high, it might not be surprising that the interests of the smallest stakeholders are neglected. Even in the Philippines, public discourse often focuses on international law and sovereignty, but not so much on the poorest of the poor. Of course, the whole country cries out when Filipino fishermen are harassed in the WPS, but China has similar complaints about its fishermen being confronted by Philippine authorities. But there is some difference between the two. Filipinos are typically in small outriggers, which does the job sufficiently because they do not have to travel too far from their village shores. Their capacity for catching fish pales in comparison with the fishermen from China and other claimant countries, who cross greater distances to reach the rich fishing grounds in trawlers and other large fishing vessels. Local fisherfolk have few alternative means of livelihood when they are either kept out by force from the area or are crowded out by competitors in bulkier ships. As mentioned before in this space, some Filipinos turn to piracy in those situations, according to Rafael Lalunan III, chairman of the Philippine Council for Foreign Relations and former Interior Secretary during the Ramos administration. Piracy is a security concern for the Philippines. It is likely connected with other criminal activities like smuggling, not only of goods evading customs duties, but also of illegal drugs and other contraband items. Naturally, this needs to be investigated and verified, but few might be surprised with what some desperate people might do. For now, the incumbent government has normalized relations with China, and there seems to be tacit understanding about the small fishermen, who depend on the disputed areas for their livelihood. Still, encounters happen occasionally, and as we have seen in the past, some fishermen have no voice when tensions flare up. Voters should keep that in mind when considering the candidates' foreign policy platforms with regard to China. We like the suggestion that places diplomacy over military options. Bilateral relations between the Philippines and China should not be defined by a single issue, and certainly not by problems with each other. But while important people debate and attempt to unravel complex issues, no one should forget the small folk. For them, the issue is simply a matter of eating, or going hungry for the day. And that's editorial for Sunday, January 30, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.